Canada's population is currently growing at a record setting pace. In 2022, the number of Canadians grew by over 1 million people, making the highest annual population growth rate since 1957. Much of this growth comes from immigration, which many Canadians have mixed feelings about. Still, as we will discuss later on, immigration might be the only solution to current demographic issues facing the cold nation. The growth of the population itself will have far-reaching benefits and drawbacks for Canada's future prospects. What's more, the current extreme population growth, which has now surpassed 40 million, is all according to a long-term plan. Chapter 1 – Growing Like Never Before According to Statistics Canada, the absurd population growth the country is experiencing is almost entirely due to international migration, being responsible for 96% of the growth. The growth Canada experienced this last year translates to a population growth rate of 2.7% and would lead the population to double over 26 years. Immigration fuels Canada's largest population growth of over 1 million. But this growth is far from accidental, rather it's due to an organization called the Century Initiative. The Century Initiative is a non-profit lobbying group which aims to grow the nation's population to 100 million people by 2100. The organization aims to address demographic and economic challenges by increasing the population dramatically. Workforce shortages, economic growth, innovation and the sustainability of social programs are all examples of issues which the organization aims to solve. According to the organization, the increased population would provide Canada with a more robust, flexible and diverse talent pool, and that to increase the nation's international competitiveness, these measures are essential. In addition, this improved workforce would attract more foreign investment. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has also been an important player in the nation's population growth. Since gaining power in 2015, he has continued to make efforts to attract immigrants to the nation, which include plans to welcome half a million immigrants a year by 2025. These plans were announced last year. The plan would see Canada welcome about eight times the number of permanent residents each year per population than the UK, and four times more than its southern neighbour, the United States. Canada sets immigration record as Trudeau seeks more workers. Chapter 2 – Anti-Immigration Sentiments Canada is known as a kind and welcoming land to many, but there is still plenty of anti-immigration sentiment to be found within the population. According to Ecos Politics, 40% of Canadians were apprehensive about visible minority immigrants. A study by McEwen University found that 23% of Canadians feel that immigrants hurt the economy and 34% felt like immigration should be reduced. 20% feel like cultural diversity limits their own opportunities. Additionally, recent xenophobic attacks show the brutal side of increased immigration. Muslim family killed in premeditated hit and run in London, Ontario. Driver charged with murder, police say. Trudeau described the attack as a terrorist attack and the incident shocked many Canadians. Hate crimes have also increased in recent years, showing the increasingly hostile stances of some Canadians. The Canadian police reported that in 2020, 2,669 criminal incidents were motivated by hate. This is the largest number recorded since 2009. Hate crimes on the rise in Canada's capital city. Chapter 3 – Why Immigration Might Be Essential The reasons for the focus on increasing immigration and, in turn, why Canada is growing so rapidly is simple maths. Canada has, like many developed nations, a low fertility rate fewer babies born as Canada's fertility rate hits a record low in 2020. Two people are needed to produce a baby. Therefore, when the fertility rate is less than two, like in Canada where it sits at 1.4, the population starts to shrink. This leads to a serious economic problem for Canada in the future. This problem, which Canada now is on the verge of experiencing, is an aging population. Firstly, what is an aging population? Well, it's when a population has a disproportionately large older population, typically characterized as 65 or older, relative to the nation's younger population. Having an aging population leads to a larger percentage of the population being outside of the workforce. A recent study from the Fraser Institute analyzed the data on population aging in Canada. 
In 2010, 14.1% of Canada's population was aged 65 or older. This number has increased to 19% in 2022. Statistics Canada forecasts that this trend will continue, reaching 22.5% in 2030. Over time, the ratio of working age people in the Canadian workforce relative to people 65 and over has been steadily decreasing. The result of this is that the number of working age Canadians for every senior is dropping and forecasts suggest that this trend will continue. A decrease in this ratio affects both government's revenue and expenditures in ways that are already straining government finances and have been a major contributing factor in a long-term decline to the labour force participation rate. Over time, governmental growth in revenue is slowly decreasing due to this trend. While this is true, an ageing population is also contributing to higher spending at both the federal and provincial levels. For the federal government, the increasing share of Canadians over the age of 65 is pushing up the cost of income support for seniors on programs such as old age security and the guaranteed income supplement. At the provincial level, an ageing population is putting upward pressure on healthcare spending. Governments across Canada, particularly at the provincial level, already face long-term fiscal challenges. The current demographic state of Canada presents a major issue for Canada's future prospects. Canada's aging population will impact economic growth, report says. As for the current growth, the chief executive of the Century Initiative says that the nation currently is on track to reach its goal and that 100 million people is a minimum by 2100. Canada on track for a 100 million population. Still, the Century Initiative is not without its critics and controversies. Some concerns include the potential strain on natural resources, infrastructure and the environment that could result from rapid population growth. Additionally, there are debates about the potential impacts on cultural identity and social cohesion. Statistics Canada says the surge in the number of permanent and temporary immigrants could represent additional challenges for some regions of the country. These challenges, among others, are related to housing, infrastructure and transportation, and service delivery to the population. As the population rapidly expands, infrastructure and services might not be able to keep up. The result of this might be that the social services the nation is so well known for starts to struggle as well. With the nation's low birth rate, measures like increasing immigration are among the only solutions to the nation's shrinking population. Incentives like cash bonuses for extra children is an example of another solution. Another crucial aspect of the situation is that of brain drain. Brain drain is a term for when highly skilled and competent workers leave a country for better opportunities in other nations. Romania is an example of a nation which suffers from this. Canada benefits greatly from its close proximity to the US through trade, cross-border investment and tourism to name a few. But a large drawback is Canadians relocating to its southern neighbour. Plenty of Canadians make use of the good, free education in their homeland and then relocate for the higher salaries found in the US. To fill the gap, Canada needs to draw competent workers from other nations through immigration. While this is true, in recent years Canada's brain drain to the US has been slowing down, though it is forecast to remain a problem for quite some time. Canada's brain drain to US is slowing down, study suggests.